Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Meg Young. I'm a school psychologist with the district and equity and inclusion specialist. So I'm just going to present a little bit tonight on the continuum of mental health and social emotional learning supports that we have in the district. Next slide. Um, so just kind of uh, just Start, I'd like to talk a little bit about the counseling staff that we have employed in the district. So there are approximately um, 65 mental health professionals that are full-time employees of the district. These include social behavior specialists that work in all of the elementary schools, student assistance counselors, one works in each of the secondary schools. Of course, we have guidance counselors at the secondary level and school psychologists and school social workers. And, and I, I do think it's worth noting that about a third of these professionals also have um, mental health clinical license outside of their school credentials. And I say that just to um, give you some depth of understanding about the level of training and experience that our professionals have. So when we talk about social emotional well being, I just want to make the distinction between social emotional learning and mental health and you'll see later in the presentation why this is an important distinction when we talk about um, levels of service or tiers of service. So social emotional learning is a set of skills that students can or adults can actually be instructed in so um, castle is the leading organization when we talk about social emotional learning. And they really promote five core competencies of self-awareness, self-regulation, um, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. And these skills um, can be, like I said, taught to students and adults, and they really can be a foundation for prevention measures and a proactive approach to mental wellness. Mental health um, generally is um, talk about on a continuum of functioning. So while the ideal is for someone to be in the area of um, good mental health, practicing good mental health hygiene, for a whole number of reasons, um, someone starts to run into obstacles that can impact their ability to function. So just to talk a little bit about social emotional learning in our schools, this is just a sample of some of the programs that run in our schools. There are a whole host of programs that run, um, and they really can vary building to building depending on the programming that's happening. Um, Responsive Classroom is a program that runs in a lot of our elementary schools and some of our middle schools. Ninth grade seminar in the class this year that is required of all freshmen, and it's really built um, around the five principles of social emotional learning. And then you can see we have some other samples here. Um, Choose to be nice, regulation. These are all programs that touch on aspects of social emotional learning for students. So when we start to talk about our framework of resources, we really started to try and think about them in a tiered system. Um, the tiered system is very similar to the tiered system through which we think about academic intervention. So if you look at tier one, those are universal type interventions. And typically most models will say that 80 to 90% of your students will um, just need that level of intervention. So that's general intervention that's available to all students, either in their classroom or throughout their school during the school day. Then when you move up the tiers of intervention, which we'll talk about in a little bit, tier two is more targeted intervention and tier three is the highest level of intervention and that's more intensive. So when we look at our some of our um, services that are available, like we said, in universal tier one, we have social emotional opportunities in the in the school and in the classroom. We have school-based prevention and awareness um, programming through the SACs, the SBSSs, guidance counselor, and the child study team. Um, and then just that goes culture and climate issues, the inclusive and trauma-informed setting um, for all students. We also have access to wraparound services. Our nurses do a really good job of providing um, referrals for students who need additional medical or dental work, and then 
We also have um, social services supports through all of our um, support staff, guided support staff. When we talk about tier two and tier three intervention, we're talking about more targeted mental health interventions. So these might be things like more critical supports um, provided through agencies like the YMCA. We will be having more tier two interventions through ESS starting within the next couple of weeks. And there's always the um, option to refer out into the community. Then we also have a level of um, mental health supports that don't really belong in any tier. They can happen for um, and these are our um, more acute supports. So they are threat assessment um, procedures and also our traumatic event response teams. Then when we talk about pathways to access, I think this is a really important point because this is um, where we frequently get asked the most questions is how do students or parents access services? So the pathways, um, let me move on to the next slide. The pathways um, really, can look similar. So this is why it's really important if a student is struggling for them to know who to turn to or for a parent to know who to turn to. So for universal tier one supports, they wouldn't really need to ask anyone for that. These are, again, general supports that are available to all students in their classroom or in the school throughout the school day. When we're talking about tier two or tier three supports, these would really be um, mainly through the SBSS or the guidance counselor. So the student or a parent can contact either that support staff member themselves, or they can contact their child's teacher, or the student can advocate for themselves through their teacher um, access and support. And then those more acute supports, they're really triggered by very specific events that um, start a chain of events or a protocol in place. Then in addition to um, those, that framework, we also have a mental health board that has been in existence probably for about five or six years now. And it's a volunteer um, group of all the mental health professionals in the district. We usually meet about four times a year to discuss um, the different things that we're seeing, the different needs, the different challenges. Um, when we met, right before we reopened in 2020 we thought it would be a really good idea to start asking administrators to attend those meetings because they are a key piece of the puzzle um, and last year was the first year that we met all the counselors and administrators together to start to talk about some of these issues and it turned out to be a really productive year we formed subcommittees and focused on these three main areas that you see listed here this year we kind of gotten off to a bit of a slower start just because of all the obstacles. Um, just getting together has been more challenging, but we did finally have our first meeting where we were able to kind of touch base and see um, if there was any opportunity for us to work on things this year. But that mental health board has been really critical in just helping raise awareness of different things that we're seeing throughout the district. Then finally, this is um, just a page just reflecting a lot of our community collaborations and connections. I know it's really hard to see because um, there's quite a few, but some of the most notable ones are obviously Effective School Solutions. They've been in the district for a number of years, and now they are going to expand their programming with us to um, help even more students and families. Um, the Mental Health Association has been very critical in um, helping us do a lot of professional development and training of our staff. The community YMCA is in all of our buildings. We have relationships with all of the local hospital emergency rooms for when we have to send our students for crisis screenings. Um, and you can see there's a number of other community um, collaborators listed here. And then last but not least, we certainly recognize the um, importance of parent resources and support. The district website now has a pretty comprehensive list of resources and supports that um, any parent or community member could access at any time. If you are on the home page, um, it's listed right under our district, right? Um, and then it says community and mental health resources, and it'll take you to a very long list of resources. Some of them are resource guides that connect you to resources throughout um, Monmouth County and the state. Some are more direct local resources. So those are accessible to um, parents at all time. We 
also developed a, a local community provider list. So all of the counselors in the buildings have access to an updated list of um, mental health professionals that are local to this area. It includes their contact information, which insurance they um, accept, what age group they work with, and what issues they specialize in. And this is a really helpful resource for our counselors because we can help remove a lot of the obstacles in helping parents find um, a therapist that's appropriate for their child if that's the resource that they're looking for. Um, and then, like I mentioned, we also have a variety of resource guides connected on the website. Um, I, have, I have one question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Young. I think this is really great. Um, I think, you know, I'm excited to see the expansion of ESS, you know, throughout the schools now. I think that will make a huge difference as well as hearing more in the future about the restorative practices, which will be incredibly beneficial to students. Um, obviously, before COVID started, I think in our effort to um, educate parents more about the mental health network itself and what was available, we were doing some presentations. And I remember attending one uh, specifically about suicide prevention. I can't think of the organization that we had partnered with that had come in to talk about it. But now as things start to open it up, are we thinking about doing or trying to do more of those presentations now to parents going forward? So as part of the contract with PSS, there's an extensive um, parent engagement series that's in the planning process right now. Okay. So there will be workshops with parents um, that will be educational in nature to inform parents more about issues um, that are uh, prevalent right now with students, um, kids and teenage children and teenagers, right. and what parents can do to help support them. There's also um, just locally, the Municipal Alliance is doing a mental health, aid, mental health first aid training. Um, it's a great training, it's free of charge. It's pretty intense, but it gives you a very wide range of information. Um, if you're interested in mental health and, and just knowing more of what you can do to support um, anyone really. I've done the training and it's a really excellent training. So that's coming up in March and I actually talked to someone at the Municipal Alliance today, and there are still spots available. Thank you. I just have one question. We do have ESS in all of our secondary schools, is that correct? Or are they just in certain ones? As of right now, or the Now. Right now, ESS just um, provides services for students who have IEPs at North and South and at Thorne, but the Thorne program is eligible to any unit score who's appropriate and meets the um, post the referral and the So we're transferring kids into Thorne if they need those services. Can we just get um, some of these things out to the parents instead of just leaving them as passive on the website? Like even if we can put maybe in the newsletter or something, but that it, the things to look for for parents at, at home I think is important. And I think once a parent has to really search, it's probably past the point of when you can kind of just make it a focus on your home. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Young. Thank, Thank you. you.